When you open the application, you see this screen. You see an X and a Y axis. These have numbers on. These represent meters. Where the axis meet, you have the camera. There are two diagonal lines leading away from the camera. This represents the field of view. There are three vertical lines, two green, one blue. The blue represents the focal plane. The green represent the near point of focus and far point of focus accordingly. Along the top, we have three radio buttons, P, N, Z, F, P, 1, F, P, 2. And there are two drop-down boxes, lens drop-down box and the sensor drop-down box. P, N, Z stands for pinch and zoom. Now, if I press to the right of the y-axis, I can move things around. And if I use two fingers, I can scale in and scale out. So that is literally pinch and zoom. If I press to the left of the y-axis, that will set the shine field point. I will come back to that later. The lens drop-down box. This has most of the Canon lenses, most of the Nikon lenses, and you've got a custom lens option at the bottom. I am going to select the 24mm Canon for the rest of this demonstration. The sensor size 2436 this is this is the dimension of a full frame sensor and it will affect the field of view accordingly so if i select 36 it opens up the field of view if you're having the camera vertical for example or if the camera is horizontal 24. down the bottom you have nine fields lens angle focal length focus distance, aperture, circle of confusion, shine field distance, camera angle, set camera angle, and shift. At the bottom of that, you have a blue slider. Now at the moment, the lens angle is in blue, so the slider is associated with the lens angle. So if I now change the lens angle there we are, I'm just about one and a half degrees. As you can see, the focal planes have now converged and it's had quite a profound effect. Where those focal planes converge is called the Schoenfeld point. And the distance from the center of the image sensor to the Schoenfeld point is the Schoenfeld distance. So you can change the angle from, in this case, eight and a half degrees, one way to eight and a half the other. The limits of the lens angle will de depend on the lens you have selected. The focal length you can't adjust unless you have selected the custom lens. Focus distance, 3 metres. Now that's just a default value. But if I select the focus distance, then the slider will let me change the focus distance and you see the depth of field vary accordingly. The aperture, again, the limits will be decided by the lens you have selected, but you can change the aperture and the depth of field will change accordingly. And I'm going to go back to focus distance just to demonstrate one thing. There we are. The focal plane's gone yellow. When that happens, you've just gone hyperfocal. That only changes to yellow when the lens angle is zero. It doesn't go yellow when the lens angle is anything other than that. But it's uh, a useful piece of information to know when you've gone hyperfocal. The circle of confusion. Now, you're going to have to experiment and change this to a value that suits your application and your camera. If you've got a 15 megapixel camera and you want to print a billboard sized photo, you are probably going to want to reduce that down to 0 0.1 or even further. Um, and if you're just printing something 4x6 photograph, for example, then 0 0.02 will be perfectly adequate. But it's up to you to experiment and change. It will go from 0 0.005 all the way to 0 0.05. So there's quite a big range there. If 
I want good results and I've got a 42 megapixel camera, I typically leave it at 0 0.015. Again, um, the application should remember what you set that to, so it'll, the next time you start the application, it'll come up with that value. I believe it defaults to 0 0.02 to begin with. Shine flood distance. This enables you to set the distance of the shine flood distance. So you can go from minus eight meters from one side of the camera to eight meters the other side. If you press to the left of the Y axis, you can set the shine flood distance that way as well. So you've got the two options. Use the slider, press to the left of the Y axis. Be warned because you can go beyond the physical limits of the lens. As you can see, you've got a lens angle of 67 degrees. There's no lens on the planet that will give you that. So yeah, don't set it beyond the physical limits of the lens you've got. So camera angle, this enables you to change the actual physical angle of the camera. So it goes from minus 20 degrees so if it's tilting upwards and 30 degrees down towards the ground and as you can see the field of view and focal planes will change accordingly. Set camera angle, put your phone on the back of your camera and it will read the camera angle and you can set the angle that way. And last of all the shift this enables you to shift your lens up or down or left right depending on whether it's operating horizontal or vertically but as you can see the field of view will change accordingly. FP1 or focal point 1 this enables you to manipulate the focal plane so you press once and you can just grab the focal plane and drag it around you'll end up with a red dot with numbers underneath it the numbers represent the distance from the image sensor in millimeters you can then press to the left of the y-axis and set the shine flood point however now the focal plane is anchored through that previous point and you can set that up and it will give you the lens angle you require the focus distance, that's just useful information, you'll just end up physically focusing on the far point. So you can manipulate the focal plane that way. FP2 gives us a, another way to manipulate the focal plane. Again, the first point of touch, exactly the same. Move it around, leave it where you want. The second point of touch will set a second point of focus up. So it's very common to have two points of focus when using a tilt shift lens. So you can set these up. Again, it'll tell you the lens angle you require. And in theory, the focus distance, but once you set the lens angle up, focus on the far point and the near point should be in focus as well. Again, using some of these features, you can take things beyond physical limits. So as you can see, the lens angle has gone red there and somewhere, move that down a bit. There we are. Focus distance has just gone red. You're trying to focus beyond infinity. So be warned, you can go beyond the physical limits of your lens. The menu help will display this video. Zero angle will simply zero the lens angle. Reset touch points. It will remove and reset the touch points if necessary. Occasionally you can lose one behind uh, one of the drop down boxes and then you can't reselect it. So reset them. At least you can start from scratch again. <laughs> Reset all you've seen me using. It puts everything back to its default values. And the scenario. 
There is a separate video for this, but basically this allows you to uh, enter physical distances and it will calculate the lens angle and focus distance and aperture you require for the scenario. So, I mean, the other day I was up in Glencoe filming at the Bichel Mountain and I had to measure the height, the camera's off the ground. Bukale Mountain, I have to know, was 3,000 metres away, th three kilometres. The Bukale Mountain is a touch over 1,000 metres tall, and where I was at was 240 metres above sea level, a difference of 760. So you have to do some homework on Google Earth to get these values first of all. Once you've got them, you can set things up very quickly because now it will tell me the lens angle I require, the aperture to get the top and the bottom of the mountain in focus. It will work out the field of view for me. It'll tell me the focus distance, but in practice what you'll do is you'll focus halfway up the mountain. In theory, it's just a fraction over halfway, but halfway would be fine. So, you get to your, your point that you've decided you're going to take the photograph from. You set the camera up. In this case, my camera was dead horizontal. You measure the distance from the ground to the centre of the image sensor, which is 440. You then run the scenario calculator. It's told me I need a lens angle of 2.49, so in other words, 2.5. So you dial that 2.5 degree angle in. You simply focus halfway up the mountain, set the aperture to 9, and that should give you everything from the foreground to the base of the mountain to the top of the mountain in focus. As I said, there is a separate video for that. So that is the tilt shift lens calculator. I hope you find this useful.